Hello everyone, welcome to Ordinary People Stories. If you're interested, please like my video and subscribe to my channel. In the supermarket, a man tried to cut in line and I refused, leading him to curse my entire family. I retorted, if you can't speak properly, shut your mouth. The next day, he was found dead at home, his death gruesome, and his tongue cut out. A row of blood words on the floor read, since you can't speak, I'll take your tongue. To my horror, my clothes were stained with blood. Three hours after the man's death hit the trending news, I found a blood-stained piece of clothing and a delicate little box at home. Inside the box was a severed tongue and a note, do you like it? It's a gift for you. I screamed, threw the items on the floor, and backed away. Cold sweat broke out all over me. What scared me most was not the tongue in the box, but the handwriting on the note. I recognized it as my own. But I had gone to bed early last night. How could I have gone out to commit murder? To clear my name, I boldly opened the trending video. Most of it had been censored, but after searching for a while, I found a crime scene photo in the comments. I sighed heavily. The bloody message on the floor, since you can't speak, I'll take your tongue. It wasn't my handwriting. My hands trembled as I breathed heavily, trying to recall last night when I had gone to bed early and slept soundly. But how did that man's tongue end up in my house? Thinking of this, I practically crawled to my computer. For the past six months, I had felt someone following me, so I installed a security camera at my door for safety. But the next second, I collapsed onto the sofa. The surveillance showed me leaving the house at midnight, dressed in the black clothes stained with blood. I had killed someone. Confirming this fact, immense fear engulfed me. But why didn't I know? Why couldn't I remember anything? Moreover, the man weighed over 180 pounds. How did I manage to kill him? Just when I was at a loss, the doorbell rang. Ding dong! The sound pulled me back to reality. Through the peephole, I saw a group of police officers. I hastily threw the clothes and items into the washing machine and opened the door to let them in. I learned that the dead man was named Duan Xu, who lived in the same neighborhood. He had his throat slit and died at the scene around half past twelve last night. Where were you between midnight and 3 a.m.? Last night? Were you with anyone? The female officer asked, her sharp gaze making me nervous. I pretended to recall, last night at 7, I had a headache and went to bed early. I watched my phone for a while and then fell asleep. I'm not sure what time it was until this morning. I have no witnesses. I live alone. She looked around and asked if she could look around my room. I nervously agreed, trying to sound casual. The officers searched my room, and the female officer, with my permission, entered my bedroom. The washing machine was on the balcony in the bedroom. I rushed into the bedroom almost instantly. The officer looked at me suspiciously, what's the matter? Is there a problem? I knew the police wouldn't assume I was the murderer just because of an argument. They were just doing routine checks. But if she found the things in the washing machine, I wouldn't be able to explain. Nothing, just checking if you need help. She searched thoroughly, looking through the table, bed, clothes in the wardrobe, and even under the bed. Then she slowly walked towards the balcony and almost instantly she was drawn to the washing machine. My heartbeat echoed in my ears, my throat tightened, and I swallowed nervously. The next second, she opened the washing machine and turned to me with a smile, where did you buy this washing machine? It looks very useful. My tense nerves instantly relaxed, and sweat poured from my forehead. Online. I can send you the link. She nodded, patted my shoulder, we'll leave now, but we may need your cooperation later. I forced a smile and saw them out. I slumped against the door, my tense muscles finally relaxing, causing a slight ache. Suddenly, there was another knock on the door. The familiar smile of the female officer appeared, I noticed a surveillance camera at your door. Can we take a look? I stiffly opened a gap, letting them in. They started checking on the computer. 
My mind raced, trying to find an explanation for why I went out last night and why I lied. Would they believe me if I said I didn't know? Could it be a case of split personality? When I came home yesterday after arguing with that man, I did mutter, people like him should have their tongues cut out. Split personality is a kind of mental illness, right? Would I be sentenced? The timeline on the video slowly moved forward. Cold sweat soaked my back. The room was silent except for the ticking clock, masking the sound of my heartbeat. As the timeline reached midnight, I closed my eyes, bracing for the verdict. But nothing happened. The content on the surveillance shocked me. The footage of me leaving was gone. I tried to stay calm as I saw the officers out. The moment I closed the door, I rushed to the washing machine. Next second, cold sweat evaporated and my hair stood on end. The washing machine was empty. The clothes and the box were gone. I swallowed hard, not daring to look back. What was going on? The amplified sound of my heartbeat echoed in my ears. I was sure of what I had seen, which meant someone was in my house. I rushed out of the bedroom and locked the door. The washing machine and computer were in the bedroom. The police had only been in the living room, so the person must be in the bedroom. I tried to calm myself, keeping an eye on the bedroom door, afraid someone might rush out. I made a quick call but hung up immediately. No, I couldn't call the police. I paced anxiously in the living room, sweat dripping from my forehead. If I called the police, my crime would be exposed. I couldn't go to jail. But the police had searched my room thoroughly. If someone was there, they should have found them. Then I remembered a habit of mine. I bravely opened the door, went to the balcony, and opened the window. The clothes and items were hanging there intact. This was even more terrifying than having someone in my house. Not only had I killed someone, but I was also evading the law, and my mental state seemed genuinely disturbed. I always avoided unfavorable truths. For safety, I checked the entire house. It was a small space with nowhere to hide. After checking every corner, I finally relaxed. The female officer's meaningful look before she left made me uncomfortable. She shouldn't have found anything, right? That man deserved to die. Thinking this, I punched the bed. Cutting off his tongue was too lenient. Yesterday, after work, I went to the supermarket alone. Seeing that I was running low on seasonings at home, I filled a shopping cart. At the checkout, the man, who should have been behind me, pushed me aside and placed his item on the counter. Miss, I just have one thing. I'll go first. He looked at me provocatively, his face full of arrogance. I ignored him and continued to unload my items, telling the cashier, please tally up. My indifferent attitude seemed to anger him. He pushed me to the ground and started shouting, Bitch, can't I pay first? Are you stupid? Fucking whore, acting all high and mighty. His rant lasted about two minutes, during which I stayed silent. Until he said, What kind of parents raised a daughter like you? You smell like poverty, idiot. I couldn't hold back any longer. If you can't speak properly, shut your mouth. Later, he was killed and his tongue was taken. Someone posted about it online, including a video of our argument which went viral. Ding dong, a text message interrupted my thoughts. It was from my supervisor, suggesting I take a few days off because the incident was affecting the company. Essentially, it was a veiled dismissal. I snorted at the message and threw my phone on the bed. The phone bounced a few times and fell to the floor with a loud thud. They say it's for my rest, but it's really just firing me. It's all that man's fault. Even in death, he won't let me be, I muttered, kicking a chair in frustration. After some thought, I picked up my phone and called a colleague. She asked about the situation and then whispered, actually, the big boss didn't say much. It's the supervisor who keeps saying it looks bad. Maybe you should give him a gift, ask for his forgiveness. Jobs are hard to find nowadays. I stayed silent for a while and she continued, our company's pay is good and timely. You should think about it. 
I'm busy, talk later. She hung up. Thinking about the supervisor's lecherous eyes every time he called me to his office made me nauseous. I guessed his motive. He just wanted to take advantage of me. I was furious but helpless. My mother's high medical bills depended on my income. If I didn't pay, she would be denied medication. Recalling how hard my mother worked to support my education, I decided to buy some gifts and visit the supervisor at night to secure my job and my mother's life. I looked in the mirror at my flawless, attractive face wondering if it brought me good luck or misfortune. I curved my lips slightly, cleared my throat a few times, and dialed my supervisor's number. His oily voice came through the phone. All right, we'll talk tonight. Your situation is tricky. The big boss is very angry right now. You're having a tough time too. We'll talk tonight. I have to get back to work now. As I finished changing clothes and was about to leave, I noticed a hair on my pillow. I was taken aback for a moment, then threw it in the trash can. Recently, my hair loss seemed to have worsened. It was already 10 p.m. when I left my supervisor's house. The night wind was chilly as it blew against me. I wrapped my clothes tighter around me, wiping the tears from my face. Just moments ago, if it weren't for the property management arriving, my innocence would have been lost. Luckily, the outcome was good. He agreed to let me go back to work tomorrow. When I got to the entrance of my apartment complex, I saw a Volkswagen parked there since noon. Noticing my gaze, the person in the car scratched his head and pretended to take a phone call. I recognized him as the one who had accompanied Officer Song to my house in the morning. I calmly went back home, took off my clothes, removed my makeup, and lay comfortably on the bed. Remembering how my supervisor's greasy hand had patted my butt before I left, I couldn't help but curse, scumbag. Someday, someone's going to cut those hands off. Exhausted from the day, I fell asleep without knowing when. When I woke up, it was already the next morning. The sunlight on my face was so bright that I couldn't open my eyes. I habitually wanted to take off my pajamas to shower. As my hand touched my body, I was startled. I was lying naked on the bed, and next to me. Next to me was a transparent box with a severed hand inside, along with a familiar note, do you like it? I gave it to you. I couldn't care less about being naked and sat on the bed, rubbing my hair vigorously. Could it be? Me again? Did I go out at midnight to kill him again? Why don't I remember anything? Where are my clothes? I checked the surveillance footage again. Sure enough, at midnight, I went out again, wearing the same black outfit from the day before. Just as I was about to turn off the surveillance, I noticed something strange. The footage from the past two days only captured me going out but not returning. As I was trying to figure it out, the doorbell rang. For a moment, I could almost guess that the female officer had brought people again. I shouted in a trembling voice, getting dressed, one moment. Trying to calm myself, I went to open the door. Sure enough, it was her again. This time, I learned her surname was Song, and her expression was much more serious than yesterday. Do you know Wang Xin? He's dead. I opened a small gap to let them in. Someone saw you at his house last night. Things didn't end well when you left. Can you explain in detail? She opened her notebook and started writing. Wait, judging by Officer Song's attitude, it seemed like they didn't see me leaving the complex. They were here because they had no evidence and wanted to ask me. I relaxed and slumped onto the sofa, yes, because he tried to take advantage of me, but I didn't kill him. He was still alive when the property manager arrived. With more confidence, my voice became firmer. But, she looked up, smiling at me, isn't it too much of a coincidence? Last night, he used his right hand to touch your butt, and today he's dead, with his right hand missing. The day before yesterday, Duan Xu insulted you, and that night someone cut off his tongue. And you don't seem surprised by Wang Xing's death at all. She smiled, her gaze sharp as if she could see through me. My throat tightened and I swallowed hard, pretending to fix my hair to divert my gaze. Miss. 
Lean, she called tentatively when I didn't respond. But your people saw me come home last night, right? I admit I had conflicts with both victims, but I'm a woman. How could I kill two men? Isn't it a bit much for you to question me like this? I became more agitated, my voice hoarse. Officer Song looked at me playfully, you're overthinking. We're worried someone might be using your name to commit crimes. If you don't mind, can we take another look? Feeling a bit embarrassed, I nodded. My agitation made me seem guilty. Entering the bedroom, Officer Song was still fixated on the washing machine. The large room was filled with the sound of the clock and the police taking photos, making the silence eerie and unsettling. A few minutes later, they left empty-handed again. This time, I even forgot about the hand on the bed. Did I handle it myself again? Seeing the garbage bag by the bed, I picked it up and tied it tightly, venting my suppressed emotions. As they left, I went out too. When I said I was going to throw out the trash, Officer Song kindly offered to take it for me. Back in the living room, I watched Officer Song hand the trash bag to another officer and get in the car. I checked the time and realized I had missed work, so I took another day off. I started tidying up the mess they had made in my home. While cleaning the dressing table, I accidentally knocked a makeup sponge to the floor. It rolled to the side of the bed and slipped under the bed curtains. I bent down, lifted the curtains, picked it up, and dusted it off. Then, I froze. There seemed to be a few new holes in my bed frame that I hadn't noticed before. I knelt down to inspect it closely. The next second, I covered my mouth, eyes wide open. I bravely moved closer, putting my ear against it to listen carefully. Inside the bed frame, there was a calm and steady breathing sound, eerily clear, in the quiet house. Goosebumps rose all over my body. Sunlight shone through the holes in the bed frame, which meant that the person inside had seen the change in light when I blocked it with my body. Suddenly, the phone in the living room rang. The abrupt sound snapped me out of my panic. I reacted quickly, running out in almost a second. It was Officer Song. As I grabbed my keys, ready to leave, her doubtful voice came through the phone, Miss? Lean, do you live alone? We found a hair in your trash bag, and it's from a male. Her words stunned me. A male? I instinctively let out a cry, feeling a cold breath on my neck, the man's warm breath on my ear, giving me goosebumps. His gloved hand took the phone from me, pressing the speaker and mute buttons. Miss. Lee, are you okay? Officer Song's anxious voice came through. Tell her you accidentally fell and that the hair might have gotten there by mistake, he whispered, then unmuted the phone, sliding a knife back and forth on my neck. I was shaking like a leaf, the man behind me, holding me tight, forcing me to stand still. My sobs made it hard to speak clearly. When Officer Song asked for the third time if I was okay, I tried to calm down and nothing, I accidentally fell and cut my arm. It hurts. The hair might have gotten there by mistake. She asked skeptically, are you sure? Should I come over now? No, no need, I'm going to the hospital now. The moment Officer Song hung up, the man let go of me. Without his support, I collapsed to the floor. I didn't know if I was crying from pain or fear. The man in black sat on the sofa, spreading his arms and sighing with relief, finally, I can sit openly in this house. Usually, I'm too afraid of being discovered, always wearing gloves. It's too confining. He removed his gloves, revealing long, unusually pale fingers as if they hadn't seen sunlight for years. Curled up on the floor, the man walked over and grabbed my chin, are you happy? I killed those two scumbags for you. They dared to bully you, but I couldn't bear to. His sharp voice was tinged with madness, his hand lightly stroking my face. The mask covered his face, hiding his expression. Who are you? I choked out. He paused, then took off his hat and mask. I was stunned, stopping my tears, frozen in place. It was him. Fragments of memories flooded my mind. Half a year ago, on my way home from work, he was being chased and beaten by some men, who jeered and taunted him. 
he curled up helplessly, not daring to speak. That day, my supervisor had harassed me, and I was in a bad mood. I went over to confront those men, but it was more of a way to vent my frustration. The men looked me up and down, said nothing, and left. I helped him up, not sure if I was speaking to him or myself. When you encounter unfairness, you have to learn to fight back. His voice overlapped with mine, bringing me back to reality. His bloodshot eyes looked at me, his face covered in red, swollen acne, looking extremely disgusting. You taught me that. Why don't you fight back? You noticed me long ago, didn't you? Every time you came home and told me, it was to get me to do it, right? Look. I did it. He dragged me into the bedroom, pulling out the severed tongue and hand from the bed frame to show me. Like a cat bringing a mouse to its owner as a gift. Do you like it? I gave it to you. The rigid hand and the slightly rotten tongue assaulted my senses, making me wretch. Coughing so hard, my chest hurt. His cold hand gently stroked my back, making my hair stand on end. His next sentence plunged me into an abyss. You threw up, you threw up, you're pregnant with my child. His words felt like a bucket of cold water poured over me, chilling me to the bone. I stiffly raised my head, my bloodshot eyes staring at him, my mouth still smeared with vomit, and almost grinding my teeth to pieces, I squeezed out, what did you say? He didn't pick up on my coldness and anger. Instead, he helped me to the computer and opened a hidden folder. Inside were real-time surveillance recordings of us, and I realized he had hidden cameras in my room. He excitedly showed me the previous recordings. For a moment, I couldn't find words to describe my feelings, anger, fear, horror, terror, and then back to anger. These emotions came in waves. Because in those recordings, I saw that every night after I fell asleep. He would crawl out from under the bed, get into my bed, kiss my forehead, my face, my hands, my feet, like he was worshipping a sacred relic. He would even undress me, put me in a wedding dress, put a ring on me, and take pictures with me. Or he would strip me naked and take pictures with his phone from every angle. The most horrifying part was that every night he would cuddle me like a lover, and then sneak back under the bed before I woke up, waiting for me to leave so he could come out and smell my clothes and pillowcases. But I was completely unaware of all this. We're so in love, he said. That sentence made my emotions collapse instantly. I shoved him to the ground with all my might, tears streaming down my face, holding my head and screaming, What are you doing? What did I do wrong for you to do this to me? Why? He froze, his hands hovering in midair, his face full of hurt, I love you, I did this because I love you. But the next second, he rushed to me, grabbing my throat and, just before I lost consciousness, tied me to the bed. Unlike the previous madness and obsession, this time he was vicious like I'd never seen before. You will never leave me. I was tied to the bed, my mouth sealed with layers of tape, tears of despair dripping onto the bed. I didn't know if it was a blessing, but he did many things without really touching me. The supposed pregnancy was all in his imagination. After he left, my emotions calmed down a bit, and I tried to figure out where things had gone wrong. How did he get my keys? How could he come and go from my house so freely? Changing the lock. Yes, when I changed the lock. Half a year ago, I found my lock had been tampered with. I was scared and called the property management, who said nothing unusual had been found but suggested I change the lock. At that moment, a locksmith came down from upstairs, wearing a baseball cap and a black mask. The property manager stopped him. Come to think of it, that man had the same eyes as the man in front of me. No, they were the same person, both with a mole near their eye. So, when he came to change the lock, he kept a key? Then the man walked in with a bowl of noodles. I wriggled and made muffled sounds, indicating for him to open my mouth. I wanted to talk to him. At least for now, he didn't want to kill me. I hoped Officer Song had noticed something and would come to save me. He came over and ripped off the tape, taking some hair with it, 
making my eyes tear up from the pain. I tried to steady my emotions. To avoid being hurt, I had to act the way he wanted. I don't even know your name, I said. His eyes widened with obvious delight, as if no one had spoken to him like this for a long time. My name is Leo Kung, Kung as in healthy. My mom wanted me to be healthy. I looked at him, and before I could respond, he started talking again. When I was born, it cost a lot of money. The doctors said I had some disease I don't know. Because of the money, my dad got angry because he didn't have money for smoking, drinking, and gambling. From then on, whenever he drank, he would beat me, beat my mom, almost killed her once. He stood by the window, back to me. I couldn't see his face, but I heard the anger in his voice. At that moment, I saw my phone, placed on the bed by him. But I was tied spread eagle and couldn't move, only able to nudge it a bit with my foot. Did you know? He suddenly turned around. I immediately stopped struggling and resumed my original position, cold sweat running down my back. Can you turn around while talking? I don't want to see you sad. Being tied up, I can't comfort you, I said. He hesitated, then burst into laughter. His face, covered in red pimples, shook with the intensity of his laugh. You fell in love with me, didn't you? I knew it. Here, let me untie you. I knew you'd love me. I did so much for you. He untied me. I quickly sat up, placing the phone under my butt, gently patted his head, signaling him to continue. Do you know why I could quickly and accurately kill those two people? Because it wasn't my first time. He stood up again, walked to the window, and gazed outside, reminiscing. I hurriedly tried to unlock the phone, only to find the password had been changed and facial recognition disabled. After several attempts, the phone locked itself. Stop trying. It's not your phone, he said without turning around, confident. Do you know who the first person I killed was? My dad. He always beat my mom. Once, when he was drunk, he almost drowned her in the toilet. My mom snapped and cursed, you should have your head chopped off. I knew she was hinting at me. So, I took a machete and chopped at my dad's neck. He walked over to me, his voice eerily calm, blood spurted out, covering me. But then my mom started scolding me, blaming me for killing my dad. Ridiculous, wasn't it her idea? So, I sent them to be together. He screamed, his voice echoing in the small bedroom. I curled up, not daring to speak. I understood his story's implication. He was saying I was his second mother. He helped me, yet I wanted to leave him. I didn't mean it that way. Calm down, you. Just then, the doorbell rang, it was the property manager. He re-tied me and went to answer the door. Minutes later, he dragged in the property manager, who I recognized as the police officer who had been watching over me. The officer winked at me, signaling that he was here to save me. But the next second, Liu Kang walked to my vanity, sprayed perfume on a cloth, and covered the officer's face, knocking him out. So, it was laced with a sedative. Liu Kang shook me, why? I did so much for you. I killed for you, removed scum for you, and you flirt with this man. Do you want him dead too? I shook my head, tears streaming, my mouth sealed, unable to speak. Just as he was about to stab the officer, someone broke in through the window and subdued him. I closed my eyes, collapsing onto the bed. Everything happened so fast, I didn't even see how the special forces got in or how the police entered my house. Seeing Officer Song, I passed out. The following events were recounted by Officer Song. After I first helped Liu Kang, he targeted me, stalking me thereafter. My earlier feeling of being followed was not an illusion. The lock-changing incident was his doing, waiting for me at the stairway. The reason for changing the lock was that he found it difficult to enter my house. My vigilance was too high, noticing even the smallest changes. He then began living secretly in my house. While I was at work, he would watch TV, read, eat. If he ate my food, he'd replace it, so I never noticed. 
after I went to bed, he'd drug me into a deep sleep and then sleep beside me. I shivered, goosebumps all over, even in the midday heat. I huddled in a corner of my bed, trembling. Later, they found Liu Kang's hair. Meticulous officer Song thought the DNA looked familiar and, after a long time, realized it matched a previous violent case's male victim. They then realized the son of those victims was now in my home. They rushed over. If they had been a minute later, the consequences would have been unimaginable. Officer Song patted my back gently, it's all over. Liu Kung confessed. But there is one thing I don't understand. Why didn't you call the police? She didn't stop her actions, waiting for my reply. I sniffled without lifting my head, because I saw the surveillance footage and a note in my handwriting saying, a gift for you, do you like it? Officer Song's hand stopped suddenly, silent for a long time. I looked up at her, her face blank with confusion. What is it? I asked. She snapped out of it, continued patting my back, nothing, just got lost in thought. The day I was discharged, Officer Song came to pick me up, but she wasn't alone. She took me to the police station. In the dimly lit interrogation room, her face was as stern as when I first saw her. Liu Kang is dead, did you know? I was stunned. I was in the hospital. He was in the police station. How could I have known? When did you find out that Liu Kang was killing for you? She asked again. I was even more confused. Wasn't she the one who told me? Seeing I wasn't speaking, Officer Song told me a story. It was a strange story, so let me tell you briefly. In Officer Song's story, I had known about Liu Kang for a long time. But because Liu Kang had taken photos and videos of me, he kept threatening me, so I didn't dare to expose him, let alone call the police. Until later, when I met that man in the supermarket who argued with me. I had an idea and deliberately said those things in front of Liu Kang, provoking him to help me kill. The second one was my supervisor, using the same method. I wanted to get rid of Liu Kang, even hoping he would die. So, I purposely had Officer Song take the garbage bag with his hair. I knew that as meticulous as they were, they would definitely investigate it. I used Liu Kang to help me kill and then used the police to arrest him. Am I right, Miss? Ling. Officer Song's words brought my thoughts back. I smiled helplessly, sorry, I'm the victim. I don't know anything. That day when you mentioned the note, I suddenly remembered. That day I went to your house, in such a tense situation, how did you have the presence of mind to take out a bag of garbage, and only from the bedroom? I didn't speak, just sat there, staring straight at Officer Song. A few minutes later, Officer Song sighed and walked out. I collapsed onto the table, sobbing uncontrollably. She had just told me that five minutes ago, my mother had passed away, still calling my childhood nickname before she died. After a while, I sniffed and said to Officer Song behind the mirror, let's talk. It was that day at the supermarket that I became aware of Liu Kang's existence because while cleaning, I found a very small camera. I was so scared that I sat down on the spot. At that moment, my first thought was to call the police. Just as I was about to dial, a man's voice came from under the bed. I collapsed instantly. The man crawled out, wearing a hat and a mask, staring at me coldly, getting closer and closer. He didn't threaten to expose my photos and videos. At that time, I didn't even know about those. He just told me that the new caregiver for my mom was hired by him. The previous caregiver had been hit by him and had a broken leg. If I dared to call the police, my mom would die in the next second. My mind went blank. He stroked my head, softly comforting me, I like you and want to be with you. As long as you're obedient, I won't do anything. Then he asked me to go to the supermarket to buy some food. He wanted to have a nice dinner with me. I ran out and, in my hurry, bumped into several people. In a quiet place, confirming there was no one around, I still decided to call the police. At that second, I received a video showing the caregiver slapping my mom's face over and over. 
Elder abuse is common. I then realized how terrifying this person was. I told him I was wrong and begged him to spare my mom. His call came, his gloomy emotions unpredictable, hurry up and buy, hurry up. In the supermarket, anxious to return, I got into a conflict with Duan Xu. In small towns, not every place has surveillance. So, on that deserted path, Duan Xu followed me, beat me up, and brutally attacked me. He stomped on my hand, hit my leg with a rock, doing everything to places that couldn't be seen. He threatened me, saying if I dared to call the police, the next beating would be worse. And through all this, Liu Kang stood by, watching coldly. When I got home, he helped me apply medicine and told me, you told me to fight back when bullied. Why didn't you fight back? Why? Looking at Liu Kang, who was losing control of his emotions, I quietly said, such a person should have his tongue cut out. He looked at me, nodded as if he understood. Then he lay on my lap, rubbing against it. I thought he would just cut Duan Xu's tongue, but he took Duan Xu's life. When I found out about this, I was terrified. We had a fierce argument. I thought Liu Kang was an emotionally impulsive fool, but he was smart enough to wear my clothes and hat when he went out. And he left no trace of his life in my house. Getting the police to catch him was incredibly difficult. He was like a shadow in the dark, imperceptible to others. And Wang Xin. Officer Song interrupted my thoughts, writing furiously. I pounded the small table with my red eyes. He deserved it. I just wanted to beg him not to fire me. He raped me. Do you think the security saw him patting my butt as taking advantage? No, it was to tell me, next time. What did I do wrong? I worked diligently, just wanting my mom to live a few more days. Because I helped Liu Kang once, I was targeted by him. You haven't experienced being watched 24-7, having someone crawl into your bed while you're asleep, and being unable to escape. And that man, was it wrong for me not to let him cut in line? So, he had to chase and beat me up? Do you know how much it hurt? He spat on my face and called me a worthless bitch. So when I saw that hair, I thought of putting it in the trash bag for you. Someone as meticulous as you wouldn't overlook it. Ha, huh, it's all over. They're all dead, my mom is dead too. Arrest me if you want. Before being taken away, I looked at Officer Song and spoke coldly. Do you think that note was for myself? You're wrong. It was for Liu Kang. From the moment I said that, I was planning to send him to jail. Do you know when I started realizing you weren't the killer but were involved? Officer Song looked at me, her expression unexpectedly softened under the dim light. From the first time I went to your house, I opened the washing machine and found a bit of blood. I took a swab sample. I had someone keeping watch at your neighborhood entrance. That night, he came out dressed as a man and returned dressed in your clothes. Finally, she reiterated, you should have called the police and trusted the law.